Yo, what's going on, guys? Tanmay for Simple Snippets, and welcome back to a new video tutorial on Java programming. So today's topic is going to be interfaces in Java programming, and yes, this is a new topic because this concept was not there in C++. So if you're coming from a C++ background, and if you have watched my C++ series, this is a totally new topic. And in the previous video tutorial, if you have missed the abstract classes, you can check it out in this playlist. So I have covered abstract classes extensively in the previous video from this playlist. Also, if you are new on this channel, make sure you check out this channel because there are a lot of video tutorials and you might find something helpful. And make sure you subscribe if you are a computer science or IT student because I upload a lot of video content and also on the website. So this is our new website that is simplesnippets.tech which you can see on the screen. So yeah, with that being said, let's start off with interfaces in Java programming. And as usual, we'll start off with a little bit of theory and understand the concept of interfaces, why we need it, how to use it and whatnot. So we'll cover everything and then we'll move to the programming part. That is, we'll perform live coding using the NetBeans ID. So make sure you watch this video till the end. So starting off, open up your browsers and go to this URL. What I'll do is I'll drop the link of this article in the video description so that you directly go to this article on our official website that is simplesnippers.tech and starting off with a little bit of theory what is exactly java interfaces and what does it help in achieving and what kind of features does it provide so let me just zoom in a little bit okay so an interface in java is a mechanism to achieve abstraction so in the previous video we already saw what are abstract classes and how they help us and when do we need abstract classes so again interfaces provide that same mechanism but in a more complete way okay so it, it provides 100% abstraction so by abstraction I mean hiding off the working and just showing the important details for example so a typical example of abstraction would be just to tell you what are the features however how the features are being executed and what exactly is happening behind the scenes is not shown to you so that's what the abstraction actually means okay so like a class an interface can have methods and variables but the methods declared in interface are by default abstract. So we've already talked about abstract methods in the previous video. So this is used to achieve abstraction and multiple inheritance. So this is one of the most important features of Java interfaces and that is it helps us perform multiple inheritance in Java. So by default, multiple inheritance in Java is not supported. So if you're coming from a C++ background, we were using that virtual keyword to resolve the ambiguity and perform multiple inheritance, right? So if you remember those videos, so in C++, multiple inheritance was supported, hybrid inheritance was supported, but in Java directly multiple inheritance is not supported, but to, in order to perform multiple inheritance, we can use interfaces. So there is another way to do this and multiple inheritance means that inheriting properties from two different entities or two different classes in case of C++ and in terms of Java, we are inheriting from multiple interfaces. Okay. Again, Java interfaces also represents is a relationship. And there are a lot of important points to remember about Java interfaces because it's a new concept. So I'll just read through it and I'm pretty sure you'll understand because it's very simple in to understand in simple language. So interfaces specify what a class must do and not how to go, how to do it. So basically in interfaces, all the methods will be abstract, right? So there is no body. So interfaces will only declare the methods and tell you what is going to do or what is a class that is going to implement that interface going to do, but how it is going to do is supposed to be overridden in the class itself. So the definition of the method has to be done in the class which implements that interface. Okay. So if a class implements an interface and does not provide method bodies for all the functions specified in the interface, then that class must be declared as abstract. Okay. So if you are implementing an interface, it is compulsory to have all the method defined in that class which are coming from that abstract uh, which are coming from that interface or we have to make that class abstract so by interface we can support the functionality of multiple inheritance because we can have or a class can implement multiple interfaces so that's one property it can be used to achieve loose coupling so in case of abstract classes there was always a parent child relationship right so that was not exactly loose coupling so there is always a dependency but in interfaces this loose coupling concept is possible now you cannot instantiate an interface. Of course, you cannot create an object of an interface. That's what this point is saying. An interface does not contain any constructors. All of the methods in interface are abstract. An interface cannot contain instance fields. The only fields that can appear in an interface must be declared both static and final. So by default, even if you don't declare them, the compiler does that process. So we'll see that when we move ahead in this article. An interface is not extended by a class. 
ओके सो वन थिंग यू नीड टू कीप इन माइंड इज वेन वी परफॉर्म इन एरिटेंस वी से सब क्लास एक्सटेंड सुपर क्लास सो एक्सटेंड की वर्ड इज यूज राइट बट इन इन टर्म्स ऑफ इंटरफेसिस वेन अ क्लास इज गोइंग टू टेक प्रॉपर्टीज फ्रॉम अ इंटरफेस वी डू नॉट से अ क्लास एक्सटेंड इंटरफेस वी से क्लास इम्प्लीमेंट्स इंटरफेस ओके सो दैट इम्प्लीमेंट्स की वर्ड इज यूज एंड नॉट एक्सटेंड सो वील सी दैट इन द प्रोग्राम एग्जाम्पल ऑल्सो एन इंटरफेस कैन एक्सटेंड मल्टीपल इन इंटरफेसिस सो वेन एन इंटरफेस गेट्स प्रॉपर्टीज फ्रॉम अदर इंटरफेस इट एक्सटेंड्स दोज इंटरफेसिस सो आई शो यू दैट डायग्रामेटिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन अबाउट दीज पॉइंट्स एंड दैट विल बी मोर क्लियर एंड इंटरफेस कैन कंटेन एनी नंबर ऑफ मेथड्स एंड इंटरफेस इज रिटर्न इन अ फाइल विथ अ डॉट जाओ एक्सटेंशन विद द नेम ऑफ द इंटरफेस मैचिंग द नेम ऑफ द फाइल जस्ट द वे यू राइट द क्लास विच हैज द मेन मेथड द बाइट कोड ऑफ एन इंटरफेस अपियर्स इन अ डॉट क्लास फाइल सो दीज आर सम मोर डिटेल्स Interfaces appear in packages, and their corresponding bytecode files must be in the directory structure that matches the package name. So we can't create instance of interface, but we can make a reference of it that refers to object of its implementing class. So we'll talk a little bit more in detail about this point when we see the programming part, and this point will be more clear. What you can do is you can pause it and read all these conditions, or you can go to this article and read through all the theory. This will provide almost everything about interfaces. so how do we declare interfaces in terms of programming so interfaces is declared using interface keyword so when you are creating a new interface you have to say interface and then the interface name so this is that example you can see over here and it provides total abstraction means all the methods in interface are declared with empty body and are public and all fields are public and static and final by default so a class that implements the interface must implement all the methods declared in the interface so you need to provide the method body if you are implementing any of the interface okay so here's what happens internally when the compiler compiles the code so the java compiler adds public and abstract keywords before the interface methods so you can see we have an interface named printable in that we have a method void print so after the compiler compiles it the compiler automatically adds two keywords that is public and abstract to the method because by default in an interface methods are public and abstract and for the variables you can see public static and final keywords are by default added so this is something that happens internally and this is something that the compiler does by default even if you don't do it and here's the relationship between class and interface and how it works so a class extends another class when we perform inheritance right but when a class takes properties from a interface it implements that interface and not extends it so class implements interface however one more use case is that an interface can take properties from other interfaces also so in that case an interface extends another interface okay so these are the literal keywords being used in the programming also so make sure you make a note of this and not make any mistakes in the syntax so let's see a program example a simple program example we have an interface named bank which has an abstract method which is known as float rate of interest now our class name is sbi which is state bank of india since i am from india implements this interface bank so since we are implementing this bank interface we need to provide the definition of this method right so here what i'm doing is i'm overriding that method and i'm providing the body which says return 9.1f which is the basic rate of interest of sbi bank similarly i'm creating one more class named icici which implements bank again and here i'm returning 9.7 which is the rate of interest of icici bank now in the main method that is in the class which has the main method we are creating a bank object bank b is equal to new sbi so here's what that last point was saying that we can't create instance of the interface but we can make a reference of it that refers to the object of its implementing class so i cannot say bank b is equal to new bank because bank is an interface so i cannot say new bank over here but i'm using a reference object because sbi the class sbi implements bank right so i can say bank b is equal to new sbi so this bank object is referring to an sbi class okay this is how reference types works in java and then i can say b is equal to rate of interest and after that i can also say b is equal to new icici so now the b object bank object b is going to refer to icici class and i can call rate of interest of this icici class okay so we'll see that in the program example also we'll try to type out this code itself what you can do is you can also pause this video and if you want to try it out right now you can do that and then the main feature which is provided by interfaces is multiple inheritance so a class can implement multiple interfaces or an interface can also extend multiple interfaces right so in both cases essentially what we are doing is performing multiple inheritance because 
we are inheriting properties from multiple entities or multiple interfaces now there are certain differences and certain new additions to interfaces after java 8 so since java version 8 was rolled out we have some new method features so we can have a method body in interface also so before java 8 this was not possible however now we can have a body in the interface but it has to be default method so it has to be made default so this is that keyword being used over here you can see so if our class implements a interface and if we do not provide any implementation or if we do not provide the body in the class then we can call the default method so you can see i have made a little mistake in this code over here right now but uh, probably when you will visit this article i would have rectified it i have to add the two lines above this which was the declaration of interface so i've just missed that out i'll do that so right now it's not correct i'll rectify it when you actually see it this would be rectified anyways moving on one more feature is that we can have static methods in interface after java 8 okay so even this was not possible before java version 8 now we can have static methods and we already know what static keyword does to methods, right? When we say a method is static, it becomes class level or it becomes interface level in this case and we do not need an object to call that method. So you can see I'm just using the interface name and then I'm saying dot the method name. And you can see I have the entire body also over here. So I don't need any object or I don't need any class to actually implement that drawable uh, interface and then create an object and then call the method i can directly use the interface name dot the method name okay okay so this was all the theory about interfaces so i know it's a lot uh, it's a new topic so you might take some time to understand this what you can do is you can read it out again and if you have any queries you can right now put them in the comments so let's jump to the programming aspect because i would want that we perform the coding together so that would be the best practice so let's start off with the NetBeans ID. Open up your NetBeans ID and create a project. Let me just erase this out. Okay, so as you can see, we have a blank project. I have just started it off. I hope you are along with me. We'll start off with creating an interface. I'll say interface bank. So we'll do that same example. In this, we are going to say double rate of interest. So I'm creating an abstract method. So I just need to declare the method and I don't need to have any body. Even if I don't say abstract, you know that compiler is by default going to add abstract and public keyword. We already saw that in the theory. Now I'm going to create a class. I'm going to say class SBI and I'm going to say SBI implements. So implements is the keyword when we are inheriting properties from interfaces. So I'm going to say class SBI implements bank. So now you can see immediately I'm getting an error and that error is because SBI is not an abstract class and it does not override abstract method rate of interest so i still have to override that method right so i'm going to do that now so i'm going to say double rate of interest and now that error goes because i have implemented the method so i'm going to return 9.6 so there's one more error that is it's showing that rate of interest in SBI cannot implement rate of interest in bank attempting to assign weaker access privilege. So it's saying it was public and now you're trying to make it default, right? So I'm going to say public double rate of interest. So by default, when we do not have any access modifier, it is made default, right? But in the interface, it is always public. So that's why it was throwing us an error. I'll just add the add, add the rate annotation. And yeah, this is it. So what I can do is I can also make this a default method. So we are on a higher version than Java 8 right now. So what I can do is I can have a default method also. So I can say return nine and just need to add default keyword over here. And yeah, just erase the semicolon. And there you go. You can see I can have a method body now after Java 8 version in the interface. So if I did not override anything over here, it's fine. Right? So let's first have the override method, overridden method. And in the main method, what we'll do is we'll create an SBI object. So I'll say SBI OBJ is equal to new SBI. And I'll say system dot out dot print ln SBI rate of interest is colon. And I'm just going to call the method OBJ dot rate of interest. Okay. So if I save this, I should get 9.6 as output. If I run this, 
there you go you can see SBI rate of interest is 9.6 now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna erase this overridden method in SBI save this and let's try to run this and now I should get 9 so there you go you can see SBI rate of interest is 9 because since we did not have any implementation in the class which implements the bank interface the default method was called because we made it default okay so this is possible in the newer versions of Java also we can have static methods right so I can say static print interface name and I can say system dot out dot print ln bank interface also I need to add the return type so I will say static void print interface name and now I can directly say system dot out dot print ln interface name is and what I can do is I can use the interface name bank dot and I can directly call the method which is static if I save this and if I run this, it's giving me an error. Let me see what error it is. All right, I cannot use system.out.println and uh, append anything because it is returning a void type, right? So I can directly call it without using that system.out.println method. Just save this and run this. And there you go, you can see bank interface. So that static method was also called. Now you can add multiple classes and implement the bank interface or you can create one more interface and to perform multiple inheritance let me just show you what we can do what I'll do is I'll add one more interface just for representation purpose I'm just gonna create one more interface ABC so just try to keep it random in that I'm just gonna create one more method which is a static method again just gonna name it print ABC and I'm just gonna print ABC over here so now to perform multiple inheritance that is to implement both these interfaces I just need to add a comma over here and say ABC that's it so now the class SBI implements bank which is an interface as well as ABC which is another interface so now I can also say ABC dot print ABC which is static method right so I can have a non static method also I can say void print ABC you can say print non static ABC I'll say non static so this is just for representation okay so and in the SBI class I can perform the implementation so I'll say public void print non static ABC in that I'm just gonna print it out I'll say non static ABC add the override annotation and in the main method I can say obj dot print non static ABC so this print non static ABC is coming from ABC interface okay so if I save this and run this there you go you can see non static ABC is now printed so similarly you can have n number of interfaces and you can make one class implement all those interfaces just by adding a comma and then implementing those abstract classes which are coming from those respective interfaces so I hope this idea is clear now and how to perform multiple inheritance is very clear to you we saw both theory as well as practical aspect and I know this is a new topic so make sure you check out the article read all the points out as well also if you like this video if you understood the concept drop some comments and let me know how this video was and if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel guys make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial on this topic or many other information technology oriented topics that's it for this video guys thank you for watching cut that part that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.